present for infants, or pictures for the nursery. A present. Number one, little girl in pitcher. Take care, little girl, that you do not fall into the water, for if once you fell in, you could not get out again. Unless somebody happened to come to your assistance. When you are sent by your mother to fetch water, you should be careful how you dip your jug in. And after it is filled, you should go steadily home without playing by the way. Number two, sheep and lambs. Dearest Fanny, come to me. Take and eat my sweet grass here. Once you never used to flee, when with joy I did appear. But now your lambkin by your side takes all your thoughts and all your care. I may go and run and ride. You are careless how or where. Three, man and ass. Turnips, cabbages, carrots, ho. Now try, ma'am. I dare say you and I can agree upon a price for this bunch of turnips. They were fresh gathered this morning, I assure you. And I think if you buy me of me once, you will never buy of anybody else. Pray, ma'am, try my fine fresh codlins. They are very cheap and as large as you can get anywhere. Number four. Milkmaid and cow. How quiet the cow seems, which Molly, the dairymaid, has just been milking. In some parts of the world, there are wild cows and buffaloes too, which will kill those who attack them if they can. But in this happy island, there are no fierce wild beasts to frighten us from the fields by day or disturb our slumbers by night. Number five. Gentlemen and boy riding. To Brighton or Worthing, and all with full speed, which way are you going so mightily fast? Take care of the reins, for your meddlesome steed might stumble and lay you too low at the last. With spurs and with boots you are finally set out to take a long journey over hill and over dale. But remember one thing, tis of mighty import. Your pony may founder, and all his strength fail. And you too confess when you weary have been, at the end of your journey, wherever you roam, that those houses and parks and fine rivers you've seen, there's no place so happy, so sweet as your home. Number six, man and woman. Ah, poor people, how sorry I am for you. I hope you have not far to go before you see your nice little cottage. It is dismal walking in such weather, but as you are caught in the rain, you must make the best of your way, and be thankful you have a home to shelter you. Number 7. The Gravel Pit How industriously these men are working. One is picking down the hard gravel with a pickaxe, the other is taking it up with a shovel and putting it into a sieve. All the small pieces go through and great stones remain. The sifted gravel, I suppose, will be carried in a cart to some gentleman's garden to make walks, and the stones will be used in mending the roads. Number eight, gardener. May I dig a little for you, father? I am sure I can dig very nicely if you'll let me try, and I can pull up the weeds, said little Jane. You're both mistaken, replied their father. You, John, have not the strength to put the spade far enough into the hard ground, and you, Jane, would be apt to pull up flowers as well as weeds. And so you must both be satisfied to work in your own little gardens for the present, till the one is stronger and the other wiser. Number 9. The Well The man who is drawing up water from the well appears to have rather hard work. Wells are very useful things. In them is collected a great quantity of water, which can be drawn up by means of a rope and bucket. And though it is some trouble to do this, we must be willing to take it, for the sake of getting such a useful pleasant thing as water. Number 10. Little Girl and Ducks 
Oh, you pretty little duck, how I should like to nurse you, said Amelia. That would be a great unkindness, replied her father. The little duck is fond of being in the water and by the side of its mother, and therefore it would be quite unhappy in your warm hands. Little ducks and chickens run to their mother the moment they hear her call. And little girls and boys should be obedient to their kind parents because they love them affectionately. Number 11. Boys and Ass I am glad to see these boys are not teasing their ass, but, on the contrary, are taking pleasure in putting a bow on its head to keep the flies off. Some boys are very cruel to poor asses. The dog in this picture seems to be rather angry at something, but I cannot think at what, for these good boys look as if they were kind to him as well as their donkey. Number 12. Children in chase. Oh, how delightful and charming to take the fresh air in a chase. To gallop along without harming, whip away what a dust you do raise. Of trees and of ponds to beware, mind likewise to treat well your ass, and then with attention and care, your time will in happiness pass. Number 13. Chopping Wood The man has in his hand a bill, and he is probably going to cut up the tree for firewood. The little girl seems to be catching the chips to carry home to her mother. What a nice thing it is to see a little girl employed in helping her father, which indeed all little girls ought to endeavor to do, because most parents do a great deal for their children, and some have, like this man, to work very hard for them. Number 14. Harvest Field Oh, what a delightful sight is the harvest field. Our great creator has made the corn grow to make nice food for the use of man. One of these men is cutting down the corn, and the other is binding it up into a sheaf, whilst those at a distance are carrying a wagon full home to put into the barn. They have got a little cask of beer, which is necessary refreshment after having worked hard in the hot sun. Number 15. Blind Man To kindest pity now inclined, see these children wish to give a trifle to the poor and blind, thus assisting him to live. See, all ragged and forlorn, he is resting by a tree, into him the light of morn, and shades of eve alike must be. Kind pity, then, thou blessed gift, help and relieve the sore distress, and up to heaven his heart he'll lift, that you with mercy may be blessed. Number 16. Man Sowing Corn This man is sowing seeds, perhaps wheat or oats. The ground has been prepared by plowing and harrowing. That box holds the seed. After the feed is sown, a boy will be set to keep off the birds, which would otherwise come and eat up a great deal of it. Number 17. The Shepherd Remark, said a fond mother to her little girl, whilst admiring a fine flock of sheep, feeding in a green meadow. How good our Heavenly Father is to all his creatures! He makes the grass to serve the sheep for a soft couch to lie down upon when they are tired, and to afford them a pleasant meal when they are hungry. Number 18. Mother and Children Some people are rich and have plenty of everything they wish for, whilst others are poor and are obliged to be contented with few things. The rich farmer gives his poor neighbors leave to pick up the ears of corn that are scattered about to make them a few loaves in the winter. See that cottager with a load upon her head? Her eldest is helping her, and a chubby little boy trudges joyfully by her side. Number 19. Errand Cart If you have any parcels to send, good people, pray, make haste, and overtake this man, who is called an errand man. He makes it his business to carry parcels for which you must pay him a small sum. His dog probably guards his parcels when he has an occasion to stop at a house and leave his cart. Number 20. Mill 
Within this mill are two very large stones. One of them is kept quite quiet, whilst the other is moved round. In the corn, being put between them, is ground to a powder. Afterwards, all the coarse parts of the husk are taken away by means of sifting. This coarse part is called bran, and the fine white inside is flour, of which bread is made. Number 21. Dobbin. Whoa, Dobbin, says a man to his horse. If you go further into the pond, I shall have to follow you, which I shall not like, with my shoes and stockings on. The other horse is drinking very quietly. What a pleasant thing to have a nice pond to go to when they are thirsty. And I hope the men also have a nice supper at home and kind wives and children to welcome their return. Number 22. Child and chickens. Chick, chick, chick. Here is some corn for you and crumbs of bread and cheese, which mama saved for you after dinner. Now mind, you little things, don't quarrel about the pieces. If you do, I won't give you any more. Number 23. Rabbit, goat, and hare. Here are three very pretty animals. The first is a rabbit of a kind, gentle disposition. The second is a goat. He is by nature wild and jumps about from crag to crag on his native mountains. The third is the timid hare. I'm afraid she is running from the pursuit of a dog. Ah, what a cruel thing it is to set dogs to hunt this beautiful little animal. The End